Hey everybody, it's Ever back with you from Hood Time Welding. Today, if you haven't noticed, is our hundredth video. Um, so I'm going to be doing something a little different today. Uh, I do reviews regularly. You know, I've got them sort of in. I don't even know how many reviews I have, but um, I like doing them. When I do a review, I usually try to wait until I have had a tool for a while before I'll do a review. And if you've noticed, um, there's a fair amount of um, Harbor Freight Bay Air tools, but there's also a pretty wide range of tools that I use because unlike most people, I'm not brand loyal. Um, to me, that has always been, uh, I, like, I guess, stupidity. Um, why be loyal to one brand? I mean, people are like, well, I know that brand always works for me. It's great. And I hate to use this term, but back when, you know, I first got into this industry, brand loyalty was big because you had word of mouth and um, people using it. And that was pretty much how you found out which tools are good, which tools are bad. But again, this term I hate. Nowadays, you have the Internet and the Internet is an awesome tool. And through the Internet, you can actually go through and. Um, research any tools you want to buy. Uh, there's multiple lists of top tens. There are YouTube videos, which I use a lot. And it just makes it so much easier buying tools that you can pretty much be assured they're quality tools. Or if they're not, you know what the problem is. problems are. Sorry. So let's start out with like basic hand tools. Um, for many years, Snap-on, um, Craftsman because of the replacement, same with the Snap-on, Lifetime Warranty, stuff like that. Those have been like the two big popular brands. I'm not really versed in hand tools as much, but those are the two big brands that everybody wanted. So I was just getting, this is when I wired out in the field. I needed a tool or a socket set that was, could use it on anything. Um, because uh, we went into different industries, some stuff would be all standard, some would be metric, some would be a mix. So I wanted to go out and get myself a tool set. I didn't have a lot of money. So what I ended up doing is, this is a perfect example. I went to Walmart, bought a cheap one. Um, uh, what is it? It's a Poplar Mechanic. I've had this Poplar Mechanic tool set that is from quarter up to 15 sixteenths and... 8 miller up to 28 millimeter up to 22 millimeter for oh god I was 19 so 26 years and I used to use this all the time when I was on the road because I would you know we were always fixing machinery and everything and even since then I've used it for fixing my cars fixing everything and it was the cheapest tool set I could probably find at the time um and even though it's 26 years old, you can see the handles beat up, I have had success because I have every single original socket. None of them broke. I beat on them. I put cheater bars on them, stuff like that. And they've still, still held up. So I'm like, that's one of the things that started to show me that it doesn't always have to be the most expensive brand or the most popular brand to work and um so another example is i don't know 10 12 years ago i got this snap on impact love the tool works great the only problem is i have two batteries for it so you can keep one on the charger have one on the tool and if you're working you know you keep the one charged up well a couple years after i got it the one battery took a crap it's been crap for years I've been meaning to find a snap-on dealer, which they usually only are in trucks, to see if I could get a new one, but I never have. So I've just got the one battery in it, which makes it a pain in the butt because, you know, you're working along, you forgot to charge it the night before, and it goes to crap. So this is a snap-on tool. Um, next example, Black & Decker. You'll see me using Black & Decker a lot. Uh, I have, oh gosh... A couple different tools, a uh, hedge trimmer, a weed trimmer. And the only reason I get Black & Decker is because 
I have, I don't know, six or eight back and decker batteries. Um, these little hand drills or cordless drills. I've gone, I think this is the third or fourth one. I can't remember. And you guys uh, probably were watching the videos the last one when the last one took a crap on me. Um, the clutch gave out on me. But why did I go back with a Black & Decker? Well, Black & Decker used to be a great brand, but they've changed where they make stuff and that. So I don't know, you know, how the brand's doing now, but they still work pretty good. I beat the crap out of them. But my big thing is, is I have like eight batteries for them. So to me, it's smarter to get to get um, Black & Decker because I have the tools for them, or I have the batteries for them. My last example is this bender. It, uh, I use it for bending my rings. Um, I actually need to do another video on it. But when I was going through and researching it, it was pretty highly regarded, but there were some issues with it. The biggest issue being a couple people had um, the little ball here that protects the end of the handle had broken off on them. And I, I think the one guy was saying how it actually – actually cut his hand so I knew about this issue so all I did was just pay attention to it and when it did break I just epoxied it on so that's an example of being able to find a tool that is a good tool and that I knew what the problems were going to be it wasn't going to be a big issue for me and I decided for what it cost comparable to other ones that was what I could afford and I would deal with the issue when it came up, which I did. So to me, um, brand brand loyalty is not what it used to be. Um, and you know, for me anymore, all I look at is I look at, hey, what kind of warranty do they have? So if something does break, I can return it. Um, what kind of track record do they have? And then I'll usually watch some videos uh, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm trying to get it big on YouTube, but I'm not. But a lot of people, other people are, that do a lot of tool reviews. So you can do some great reviews on them, but you got to watch. Um, like right now, you'd notice that I am not sponsored by anybody. That would be awesome if I could get a sponsorship someday, but I'm not. So I don't care. I'll review a tool, and it is what it is. Um, I'm not going to put any fluff behind it. I'm just going to tell you how it's worked for me and whether I suggest it, whether or not, whether or not. Um, sorry, I know I use Omni a lot. So where was I? <laughs> sorry about that. I got sort of lost in my thought. So for me, when I'm researching a tool, like I said, I use YouTube, I use Amazon. Um, and when I'm looking at reviews, I don't always only look at the good reviews. I look at the bad reviews because the bad reviews are going to be, Hey, this is what broke on me. This is what I've had problems with. Is it an issue that I can handle, that I can fix? Um, was it maybe a quality control issue? Because sometimes I think the bigger brands do a little bit better because you spend more money on it. They take a little bit more time with their quality control. And so the crappy stuff doesn't get through as much. But as my Snap-on battery shows, it does get through. Now for bigger purchases like, say, welders, which I've got two of them. Um, everybody's always been, you know, you got to have a Lincoln, a Hobart, or a Miller. You know, those are the only brands. You got to have one of those. You don't have one of those brands. All the rest are, are excuse my language, crap. I was going to say another word, but it's YouTube and I didn't want to get beeped or anything. So anything that's a larger product like that, and I don't know this for a fact, but you have to realize they have circuit boards in them. They have parts that are common to all welders. And I'm sorry, I can pretty much assure you, not all brands are going to make their own little microprocessors and stuff like that. So what you're going to have is you're going to have one central dealer that is crossing brands to sell these microprocessors. I mean, again, they might pay a little bit more because maybe this chip went through a little bit more of a quality control than the one that's sold to say an ESOP. You know, the Miller might be, or I don't know, I'm sorry. I don't remember which brands are connected anymore. Um, I guess I should have done a little more research, but I'm, what I'm just trying to say is, you know, they might have a little quality 
higher quality control for the machines that cost a little bit more. But that doesn't mean you're not going to get a good machine for the lesser price. Um, like my prime welds, I paid a third of what I would have paid for a Miller machine of the same caliber. And it's all about the name. And to me, it's never been about the name. I've never been one that's been brand loyal. Um, big example is cars. Cars are, people are Ford, Chevy, uh, Jeep, you know, whatever. To me, half the components probably from cars, no, maybe not half, but there's a decent amount of components that all the cars share that have to come from only certain suppliers. So, you know, you're not really getting that much better by buying one brand to another. To me, what matters more, sorry, mosquito, is what day of the week it was built. If it was built on a Monday or Friday, I don't care which brand it is, you're probably gonna get a crappy car. Cause if it's on a Monday, people are still probably recovering from the weekend. And if it's a Friday, they don't give a crap anymore cause they just wanna do their work and go home and have the weekend. So to me, I've had luck with across all brands, but again, it's because I think, well, I don't know for sure, but I was lucky enough not to get a car built on Monday or a one built on Friday. Um, and any tool you do get, the other big thing is maintenance. You've got to take care of your tools. Uh, for electrical tools, that means, you know, making sure they don't get wet. If they do get wet, getting them dried out. Blowing them out if they're getting dusty. Um, if it's a mechanical tool, it's, again, don't let them get rusty. If they get rusty, oil them up. If you do maintenance to a lot of tools, they will last longer. So to me, the biggest thing that dictates which tools I buy, well, there's two big things, is first off, like I was already talking about, I look at the reviews from other people because you have that tool access to you right now. You can look at the reviews. You can see, like I said, what the good is, what the bad is. Is it something I can deal with? Is it something that I think was just slipped through quality control? And the other big thing is, and I think this is for everybody, it's your pocketbook. Man, can I afford this? And if the answer is no, don't worry about getting the Milwaukee or the DeWalt. Get a tool that you've done some research on and you know is going to work for you. But again, this is all my opinion. I was just rambling on a little bit tonight. I hope you enjoy my content. As always, big thumbs up. Any comments, questions, you know, go ahead. And, any comments I try to get back to right away, you know, at least, you know, give it a thumbs up or and read it or even comment right back to you. Um, I don't get a ton of comments, but I enjoy them when I do. So, again, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye.